that's on our ranch is in Alberta, Canada. Um, and we have uh, a daughter who lives here and I'm actually inside her, her little girls. She had her, her first child. So it's my eighth grandchild. So the room I'm in where it's the quietest is her room right now. <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll have cattle here and we have cattle there. Um, I guess I'll just give you a little background for myself is I've also, um, I love the, uh, I love this, this organization for conscious politics. I love the Academy. I love what you guys are up to. And I'm actually not kidding. I actually see that who you guys are will actually create what, what peace in the world. So I'm, I'm a hundred percent for this, um, and authentic and, um, you know, uh, authentic politics is I think what is one of the one of the things that I hear inside of this academy that becomes like who are we authentically who are we really um and so I'm I'm thrilled to be with you um I'll give you a little bit more about me is I I do work with Andrea all the time and I work to raise uh, tr transformation in the world through leaders so this is also another mark here is like to, what will it take to transform leaders in the world to have transformation in the world through politics, um, you know, through families and leadership everywhere. Um, and I, uh, I've also instituted and founded a not-for-profit for sustainability in agriculture and particularly with young people. So, and by young people, like you all look, I don't know your ages, but you look like, like who I'm actually always um, in, a, in board meetings with, like making a difference for sustainability for the world. Okay. Um, what else? I think that that's really what there is right now. Um, so I'd love, I'd love to hear from you. My, uh, you heard from me, like my stand is who I say authentically am is love and creating authentic leadership that will transform the world. Yeah. So would you guys mind just telling me who you are and what your, what your stand is? Hi, Wendy. It's a great pleasure to see you again, and uh, uh, that's a privilege, actually, to be in this, yeah, circle, too, of, <laughs> in this circle of the global politics. Um, just to, to remind you and to tell you, yes, I'm an associate professor, uh, and uh, for a moment I'm also team lead for PGA, Professional Governmental Association, and uh, I'm uh, one of few experts of Italian politics uh, in Ukraine. That's very interesting. That's why I'm uh, very curious about Yuan because your French expertise it's uh, more than a you know like a music for me to to hear that and that you're in this field. Um, and I'm I'll be short, very. <laughs> and what inspires and motivates me is a passion for knowing more and getting to know myself. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much, Victoria. Pleasure to be with you again. All right. Well, now that she's mentioned you, Jan, how about you go? You're on mute. You're on mute, Jan. We can't hear you. You have to unmute yourself. Now you can hear me. Hi, Wendy. It's a pleasure to hear you. Hi. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have some fresh air from the United States. Uh, it happened by accident that I became American at birth, although I'm culturally European still with a passport. The last time I was in the US, I was, uh, I'm not so much of a left-wing guy, but I was supporting the I thought to be the man, I thought to be the most authentic in the presidential candidate, and that was Bernie Sanders at that time. So um, you reconnect yeah, me to going. this uh, yeah. authentic spirit, uh, the American people, and this uh, energy that you have that, I mean, in Europe we have, uh, at least in France, a lot of maybe intelligence, but sometimes it blocks the energy, you know, <laughs> kind of. Um, so so it's, it's, a great, it's a great pleasure to reconnect to this, this uh, dynamic uh, mood and, and optimism. Um, you ask our stance or stand, I'm not sure if I understood you correctly. I think I could sum up, uh, yeah, the, you know, the very, very famous, yeah? No, I it's just perfect. Sum up what you th what you think it is. It's perfect. Uh, you know, this is a very famous book from Gandhi. Everybody knows, but I still 
when I was studying political science in the south of France, we wanted to create a club around that. It did not work that well, but still we connected. And that's the idea that, you know, you ought to be the change that you want to be in the world. So this is what I believe in, uh, basically. And, uh, and that's it. And now I live in Poland and uh, I'm, I'm culturally French Polish and I'm happy to, to continue on my way now working for French Parliament. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, exactly be the change who you want to be in the world. So, so who, what do you want to be in the world? Like, what what change do you want to see in the world? You know, and that you that you say you are. Um, hi, my name is uh, Maros. Uh, I'm a student of European studies in uh, Germany, but I was born in Slovakia. That's uh, how I kind of came to the, to the Global Academy because I saw uh, those young Slovak uh, women uh, developing this, this beautiful project. Um, that's why I got very interested in, in, in the first place. Um, what I very liked was, was your idea of, of creating authentic leadership uh, in, in the world. Um, I very much liked it because what I see nowadays, especially in politics, and that was maybe also kind of a motivation to, to go into this program is, um, you, you see people who want to get to power and, and to maintain power, but, like, but this, this idea of leadership of, of, and, uh, yeah, this authenticity in leadership, um, it's, it's kind of lacking, at least from, from what I see. Um, you have the people in power, but you see it's, it's yeah, they are, or you have the feeling they're, they're playing you. And I would like to be part of the change, uh, as Johan said it very well. Mm. That's, that's really, 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 um, yeah, authentic leadership is, is, is perfect. Um, and then inside of that, thank you so much. Um, do I say your name like it's Marush? Marush, is that, what, is that how I say your name? Yeah. Oh, Just okay, great name. Yeah, never heard of it and I love it. It's awesome name, <laughs> Marush. Yeah, I like, love it. Um, Jan, if I can come back to you for a, just for a minute. Um, when when you said that, I like it. It st strikes a chord in me. As a matter of fact, we're we're like starting to launch a course that's very similar to that kind of thinking um, inside some of the work I do. But when you say to be the change I want to see in the world, what's the change you want to see in the world that you're going to be? Uh, which ministry? <laughs> which department? <laughs> which area of policy? Yeah. <laughs> which, uh, yeah. Can you specify? Um, it's really more instead of like a when you point to that, that's more like a um, like an area, right? Versus who you're going to be. So who you your stand is really who you say you are. Like my stand. So Andrea said it off the top. Um, one of my stands in the world, besides authentic leadership, is I say I'm love. Like I will come at, I will come at whatever, you know, difference I want to make in the world and I'll come at it through love. Now, does it mean I'm love all the time? Not a chance. <laughs> I don't be that all the time. But I really notice when I am standing for love, authenticity, like peace in the world, who I'm being, if I'm going to be love and I'm going to be peace and I'm going to be authenticity, that actually changes the conversations that I have and, the, and, the, and then what I'm standing for. So for you, if you weren't worried about any of the ministries, who do you say you are? Oh, uh, the, the, your last sentence was a bit... Uh, I, cut by, by the connection. Who do I, what do I stand for? Yes, that was your question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, in, in generally speaking, in politics and society, I, I want the people who care the most and uh, who are the most service oriented, but also 
competent to to have responsibilities. That's that's basically what I'm looking for, and I believe that whatever the party, whatever the mindset, the group of people. Um, whatever the culture, the ethnic background, the business type of people, uh, you always have people who are ready to uh, to compromise outside, but not to compromise on their deep values and, and to serve. And uh, um, I believe that in what we call democracy, we put some mechanisms to try to help those people go on the top sometimes. And I believe we we have a responsibility to try to really, really look for that, uh, really look for that deeply. Although it seems to me that the era where we needed exceptional people has passed, and it seems that every citizen needs kind of to start to be responsible and uh, take part in writing the laws, and et cetera, et cetera. So maybe it's already a transition. Yeah. The general word yeah. would be consciousness shift awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got it now. Um, it's really inside of what you were talking about with Bernie Saunders. Like, I, I like, fully support him, too, fully supported him um, with some of his, um, you know, who he was being, right? Like, who he was being was, like, for all people. And, um, and so inside, of, so that's what you're speaking to, like, you know, the consciousness of what it will take to have um, that kind of leader in the world. And then that kind of leader in the world, you know, in it, it, it didn't work for everybody, right? Just didn't work for everybody. And we got a different kind of leader in the, in the United States. So you're look, like, you're looking at all people, all people raising their consciousness level, all people standing for um, what will, how we'll care for everyone. So there's a care for everyone inside of your stand. Makes sense? Yeah? Okay, good. That's right. That awesome. Makes sense. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's so great to know you guys. So um, I really Really appreciate that there is so where we're going for this session um, and it's the beginning session was is like the foundation of integrity so um, and for for I have a particular um, uh, definition of integrity but uh, right now what does integrity mean to each of you and then I'll, 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 I'll give you the definition that it's from where I'm coming from in this in this session. So what's integrity mean for you? Uh, for us and for our country, the integrity May I start? is... Because, oh, yeah. Oh, Go sorry. Ahead. I didn't, I didn't know <laughs> you, were, you wanted to no, um, It's okay. Victoria, we'll go to, we'll go to Marash after. Yeah, go ahead, okay. Victoria. So it's firstly, it's about the responsibility at all of the levels, starting from the responsibility of uh, myself, then the responsibility of the community. So it means how I project myself to the community as well and how the community projects itself to me. But also then it's a state-citizen relation, right? So it's uh, something that uh, is, uh, in this respect, it's very close to the accountability. And uh, when we talk about the accountability of, uh, of the state and uh, the citizen, so here there are a lot of the layers that uh, come into. So within the citizen and the state, so it's mostly where I'm talking about the accountability here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Okay, Marush, what do you say? Um, yes, yeah, so if I may, thank you. Um, I read this nice quote on integrity, which went, uh, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the definition I was sticking by uh, since I read it. Mm, beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. So, Jan, is this similar for you? Yeah, integrity. Uh, for me, it simply means ethical behavior, ethical behavior, but it's deeper uh, in the sense that it means, yes, moral behavior, ethics, ethical yeah. behavior, um, doing good, but for me, it, it's the 
inside side, inner side of integrity. So it, it's ethical behavior deeply rooted with my inner values, my uh, core, what I truly believe to be me. And in French, integrity means uh, to be whole, to be like a whole, full. So um, it's a way to become what we are in the potential inside. So it's yeah. ethical behavior, but much deeper and in, inner in, to me. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so all of that, all of what everybody here said applies. Um, and, and I'll lean more towards the definition that Jan said is that, that integrity in this space right now, um, from where I'm coming from and what I want to actually like mentor out, teach out is there's three spaces to integrity, but the in definition of integrity that I'm talking about is to be whole and complete. So unimpaired, unbroken, whole and complete. So what does that mean, right? What does whole and complete mean? And it would be being a person of integrity is that you, there's three spaces to be in. And so being a person of integrity is that you, you do what you say you'll do. And I you know, like really go back to my rush. Like you, you do what you'll say you'll do. And then they, even when no one's watching would be that that part is like, there's an impliedness, right? Will what I'm going to do. And then I'll do what is implied that I do as a person of integrity or assumed as a person of integrity. So that's one space. And the second space is I'll do what I say I'm going to do when I say I'm going to do it and how I say I'm going to do it. You know, so it, it's just like, so that there's a wholeness and a completeness in what I say. And then the third space, which is probably even the most powerful space that, um, that we're, that we're, we're teaching integrity out is is, it, is it's the context in which I say I'll do what I say I'm going to do or, you know, and then who I'm going to be about it. So the context in, so when I'm saying um, yes to something, then I'm, I have integrity in, the, you know, like I'm not coming from a place of thinking it's something, it's the right thing to do or a good person would do that. I'm coming from a context of, um, you know, what I create is as in, I have power in this, I have integrity in this, and I'm going to say yes. So those are the spaces, um, just kind of the spaces to just give you guys like an idea of what I'm, uh, of what, of what this, this session is going to be about. So um, seems pretty simple. <laughs> and uh, integrity is not simple. So integrity is, um, you know, a way to keep a word and then there's a way to honor a word, right? So when I said to you guys, I was going to come here, this was like almost a perfect way. There was an assumption that I would be here at, for my time, it's noon, right? I'm not sure what time frame, time zone everybody else is in. Um, and Andrea and I had a conversation that I said I was going to be in another Zoom meeting. I needed 15 minutes to, to, to transition, right? And, um, but then I never did anything about that. I like literally never did another thing about that. I didn't say, hey, Andrea, um, just so that, you know, because it's unusual to start at quarter after. Hey, Andrea, I uh, just want to make sure that you know, like for us to start this session, I'm going to need 15 minutes, right? There's a, like, I just like kind of left it with Andrea. And so when I could see that there's a breakdown in who I say I am, you know, I, I'm a person who, you know, I show up, I show up when I say I'm going to show up, but it doesn't matter that I had that conversation. It matters that it was just left to someone else versus who I say I am. So when Andrea phoned and I said, Oh man, yeah, I will be, give me another five minutes and I'll be there. It seems like a really small thing, but it's not a small thing. So when I came here, it's like, I have it that that is on me. It's not on Andrea. It's not on anybody else. That is on me that I didn't do what I knew to do to actually have you guys all set up where you're not spending 15 minutes waiting for me like that. So it's not moral. That is bad here, but it's just like who I know myself to be is a person who shows up and what I, what I missed in being responsible for 
creating and keeping that communication present to Andrea, it doesn't like match who I know myself to be. So do you get that? Anything about it for anyone in that, just that example? Yes, I understood you talked a lot about matching mm -hmm. uh, what you do and what, how people see you and what you are outside and what you, 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 you want to be what you are inside. I see it as a matching issue for you. Yeah, yeah. And to honor my word, so I didn't keep my word here, right? You can see I didn't keep my word. But to honor my word, I come here being responsible for the, you know, and thank you so much for all of you for being so gracious about the time that you're, you know, that you've committed to being in this conversation that I wasn't here with you. So it's like, that's the honoring of my word. So, yeah, just a, and that's just a really quick example. But being of a, a person, um, being a man or a woman of integrity, um, if, you, if we don't get that as a foundation, you can forget about being a leader or being the leader who you say will make the difference in the world, will make the change in the world. Integrity is, um, is so foundational to everything that we do, we say we are, um, you know, that it's, to me, it's like gravity. If you, where there's lack, where there's no integrity, there is no gravity. You know, integrity and gravity are the same thing. I hold a ball, I drop it, it falls. I say I'm giving my, my word to something. I give it in a, in a you know, a, a worldview or a context and where I can say yes very powerfully or no very powerfully. Then that is like, to me, it's just like gravity. It's like, you know, it's just there. It's all it is, is it's just there and it's present. So, and I know I've been doing a lot of speaking, but um, the last thing I want to say before we like look to discover together is integrity is, um, is like a mountain and it's like a mountain with no top. There, I never land at, I will never land at being integrous in everything I do, everything I think and everything I say. But I, who I am as a leader is going to keep climbing that mountain to keep like upping my game of integrity so that it matches what the integrity of the, what would make the world work, what would make the world whole and complete. I'll just keep climbing that mountain. So, um, so it's, you know, a place to get used to climbing, <laughs> get used to the view. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so right now, what do you, is there anything that, um, anything that anybody wants to say about integrity? It's like agreements. It will be who you say you are. It will be what you're, you're a yes to, also what you're a no to. So what are you guys getting? I've already put in my favorite quote from you. It's uh, I, I've just learned from uh, the projection that what we project on ourselves, when as you were telling, we project to the world. So I liked what when you were saying integrity is what will make the world complete. So I've never been, you know, kind of thinking about the integrity itself uh, as uh, the word completeness. Uh, so um, and in this respect. Um, I must say that in all of my capacities, like professional, but also personal, which I think is also important to mention, is that we are trying to make ourselves balanced. And sometimes I'm wondering myself, how is it for you to be balanced, but at the same time to be complete? Uh, whether we understand that between balancing ourselves, sometimes we are lacking this integrity or this completeness, to be precisely. That will be my question mm -hmm. even to you, Wendy. Thank you. Sorry, I switched mm -hmm. off uh, the video due to a very bad signal here, and, uh, but I'm still on live with audio. All good. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great, Victoria. And, you know, even you switching off the video to bring, um, you know, to bring more power into this communication is, has got integrity to it. Can you see that? Everything we do, everything, you know, whatever we're going to bring to make something whole and complete is what I'm talking about. So thank you for doing that. 
Victoria, um, can you come off mute for a minute? Because I just would. Do you want to work with me for a minute, just for the uh, with the group here? No, you don't need to come off video. You can stay off video, but just come off mute so we can talk. Yeah, sure. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, great. Right on. No problem. Um, so, um, it, would you be willing to like look at um, you know as as in leadership for you? where do you see that you have like a strong relationship to integrity and where do you see that you have um, that there's a, there's a place that you haven't mastered or that you want some more mastery around. And I'm, 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 I'll start by giving you an, yeah, an example yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, me, sorry. just to like give you, yeah, no, no, you didn't. I asked you and then I jumped in. So, um, so when I, uh, I'm running at the, at currently I'm running for, um, well, three businesses and then, um, you know, four places that I need to be. Right. So I need to, I'm running three businesses. I have four like actual places that I need to be. And, and often right now, um, with being here in Texas with my granddaughter, um, those things are colliding. Like they're just not, you know, all working well at the same time. So, when I looked at, um, when I looked at for myself, it's like, okay, what I've done is I've done a bunch of booking of meetings. I've, um, and I've done it in a way that I thought had like integrity. And then I have this little, this little, you know, granddaughter. And I promised my daughter I would come and be here with her. Um, and especially when um, her husband had to be gone for the last two weeks, he's just home, but he had to be gone for the last two weeks. Now, what I thought was going to happen is I thought my husband was going to be here to help me and he couldn't. Um, so all of a bunch of places and I have a brand new granddaughter and a daughter that I really actually needed to help. And I could see that my there was a, a lack of like integrity in everything I was doing at the same time. So what I needed to do was go back and say to people like, look at this is what I'm dealing with right now. And um, my priority is with my daughter and my granddaughter right now. So are you up to, you know, wherever there was a change or wherever I had to actually make, like really make something happen that, you know, ha that had integrity in it. So I'm talking about like, so as a leader, I can see, I say yes to a lot of things and I can see that sometimes life happens and comes at me and then who am I going to be about it? Okay. So now for you, Victoria, where do you see that you're, you've got real strides in, in your leadership and where, where are you not, where do you not have either power around or mastery around? I think I will just give you, I, I'll give just a reflection where I understood your words correctly. So being a leader, it means that uh, being a leader, it's okay, but life also takes sometimes us uh, to be flexible too. And your example is a great one. So that you're accepting that uh, not everything is perfect in the life. So maybe it's about, uh, I'm reflecting on myself. So not being perfect is also perfect, you know. Uh, and if we... Mm -hmm accept this imperfectness uh, in every sector what we are doing then we become a complete and uh, i'm just reflecting about myself uh, to tell the truth both of my um uh, sectors being in all of the capacity that i presented have some uh, in incompleteness uh, so or some have something to be still improved uh, like uh, uh, at uh, the department where I'm working, I, I still see that I need to improve, but I'm lacking the time for that. Uh, for the team that I'm working uh, uh, as a volunteer, I'm lacking space. So we are working online. Um, for the project I'm working into, I'm, sometimes I'm lacking knowledge and I accept that. Uh, but, you know, like uh, when you're still accepting your yourself being incomplete, you are feeling what we call ups and downs. So, you know, like maybe it will be your lesson for me, how not to accumulate these downs. I, I, of course, I understand in order to develop ourselves, we have to, you know, kind of move in, in the zigzag, you know, way. 
but still my my passion now and my idea is how to mitigate these risks of a very uh, tops up and very bottom downs you know what i mean so it, it's not mm -hmm. so much of you yeah. know like it's not um, putting so much of the stress to other capacities and other spheres of life okay awesome so when you have your downs victoria was, and this is the the third place i was speaking from like the 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 um the the world view or the context the thinking that you have when there's a down, what goes on in your head? What's the context you have? Um, I don't know what I understand you. Um, uh, okay. I, th um, I think it was just accumulation of everything, you know? Andrea, help me out here. Burned out, you know? know? Like, I think it was about being burned out, you know? Like, uh, yeah. And that's the, that's the thing. Um, yeah. It comes to my mind just right now. But to be precise, to tell about the context, I think I, I, I really don't know what to, to take out from. Okay, I'll, I'll, get, I'll, I'll, I'll go deeper in my own example. I was expecting my husband to be here. I, I, I like, le legitimately was expecting him to be here with me. When he wasn't, my context was, like my thinking was, um, I, had, like, I swore in my head. So I won't do that here, but you know, I was like, you know, come on, like we agreed to do this together. And even though his reason for being gone was a really good reason, like we have cattle, um, he had to put up hay for them for the whole year. And so his reason was really good, but my context was, here we go again. I get left like figuring everything out while well, you get to do what you want. You know, even though it's a good thing that he wants, but I was mad and I was like, man, here we go again. So my context was not empowering to me and it certainly wasn't empowering to him. If you asked him, um, cause my context came from my head to my mouth out to him, <laughs> you know, like, like that. Right. So when I say I'm a person who has in, you know, integrity with the people and I'm love. Who I was for my husband at that time was not love. Not only was it not love, it was a very loud, um, upset, angry wife. So in a downward slope, right? So I had a thinking like that. Now I got through it, but for you, Victoria, when things are, when there's the ups and downs, when you're in a down, just go to like, and the best place to do this is, is, isn't to theorize it. Like go to a time that there was a down and what was the thinking that you had about that down? So if you look at time, team, space, knowledge, what's the, what was your, what, what did you think about? Um, in my case, I think it was a combination of time, space, and, in, and knowledge, mm -hmm. <laughs> actually a lack of knowledge. Yes, uh, so what did you but what did you think? Like, what was the thoughts in your head? Like, what did you say to yourself? Mm, emotionally negative. I, I, actually, I think I understand you right now, Wendy. And uh, maybe I'll need yeah. just more time to reflect. But thank you for this tool, you know, to, to, to try and to be back and to think about the four areas of uh, what was uh, the most sensitive for me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can you, are you still willing to do some work with me, Victoria? Cause I think yeah, sure. Really I'm close. just, uh, as I told you, uh, I'll maybe it'll need some time more to, to, to reflect because it was, a, uh, as I say, some, uh, some accumulation of various areas. So therefore it's very, uh, difficult for me to be specifically back to one particular component. You, you're right. I have to reflect more and, uh, just to understand when was the exact start, but not, you, you know, the kind of emotional term oil. Yeah. Well, it, but it, there, that's the context, right? When things don't go well, who, what, like it, you could have the noblest, the noblest, um, you know, ways of being like, you want to be somebody who's like a transformational leader, right? Um, or a, a team, like a person in your team, or 
Um, but when all of a sudden when you have too much coming at you, so there's life, there's circumstances coming at you, there's a thought that you would have that we have and every person here has because you're a human being. As human beings, we have thoughts when circumstances aren't going the way we want them to. So, and then, then who are we going to be about it? So I gave you my thought with my husband. Um, I didn't stay with that thought because I, you know, have a lot of, uh, a, a lot of training and development in this, but I stayed with it like quick enough that I actually, from my head went out of my mouth, you know, like, man, here I am alone. So, so if you're, it, it'll be a thought that's there anytime, not even just with your team, Victoria, but it'll be any time too much comes at you, you know, there'll be a, a, like just a way of thinking. So, so, so think on it. Um, don't need to press here, Andrea, um, cause you and I have done some work and it will give, it'll give access to everybody here. When mm -hmm. circumstances in your life aren't working, what's your, what's the context or the thinking you have? Very often, uh, and today also, when you, when you shared the thing of your delay, automatically I go into that, oh, I was wrong. I was wrong. I did not come right. I did it wrong. Because for me, there are two contexts. I did it wrong. One, I did it wrong. First one is I don't belong. I'm not loved and I don't belong. So anything, anytime mm -hmm. I'm excluded out of any communication, it means I don't belong there. And it's because I did something wrong. Yes. Very often. So today yes. I automatically shared and saw my inability to share with these amazing people that when they will be late, because you communicated this with me, I remember two weeks ago, but I completely forgot. And then I was calling you and I was like, where is she? And, you know, and I was like, okay, I did it. Yeah. So there are two contexts to yeah. make what okay. started, but Good. yeah. Every time I don't belong yeah. because I did it wrong yeah. as well. Like it's every time there and the same in politics. Every time. Yeah. The academy. Okay. These yeah. people are not joining. Maybe I communicated it wrong. Maybe this is not the, yeah. So it's yes. all true that, that happened. Yes. Which is crazy. <laughs> yes. So then for to be, to bring yourself, to bring yourself. So not just the situation. but to the foundation of integrity there's a way of of, of doing it that you, will happen through communication mm -hmm. it's it's like literally all, all, always there that you, even communicating with yourself or communicating with another mm -hmm. so um you and i communicated right we brought it to yes we did have a conversation and then i took responsibility for actually not keeping it in front of you because i didn't like that's that flat out is what happened so anyway, that's, that's what I'm, you know, those are the, the foundations of integrity. There's a context and then who I say I am doesn't match my context, right? Like you going to, I did it wrong, doesn't match who you say you are, Andrea, really. It just is a, it's a context. So it, if, it, you, if you made up that context, you can make up another context. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, um, I think this is, uh, I wanna know what you guys are getting out of it so it can actually put it into perspective in your life. Oh gosh, hang on. There we go. Um, hang on here two seconds. I just need to communicate with the person otherwise they keep, uh, they keep phoning me. <laughs> But Victoria, thanks a lot because it's really, it takes courage. And for all of you, like this is a safe space, which is also recorded only for you. So anything that is, you know, like shared here and maybe it's not comfortable because speaking about integrity is not always super comfortable. No, I'm, I'm actually, thank you for uh, letting me leave it here and for the space and uh, for the safe space. And thank you, Wendy, for the examples. I told you I'll, I'll need some more time to reflect but i got mm -hmm. it <laughs> okay good okay thanks a lot so i'm gonna i'm gonna complete yeah you're welcome i'm gonna complete what i did with my husband so once i could see my i could see like with with my husband you're like oh great he's not here now i have to you know figure it out and do everything 
once I could see it for what it is, it's just like it lacks integrity for me to leave him who I actually love like that. I, you know, called him and I said, look, I know, I know that you have to, you, that you're doing everything you can do for us. And I know that you're in a, um, um, there is no choice here for you. And how I left you doesn't work. You know, I, I know who you are. Let's figure this out together. And then I, and then I, and he was like, he was awesome about it, right? Let's figure this out together. So we actually did a lot of figuring out together. And then I went to everyone who I also had my word, my promises to, I'm going to get this done and I'm going to get that done. And I said, this is what I'm dealing with right now. You know, my husband was going to be here and he's not here. And my daughter really needs help. She has literally a brand new baby and a whole ranch to run. And I can't, I, I have to help her. So how can we work it out? So I started communicating with every single person that I had a word with and communicated it with authentically what I was dealing with and then made in, and we worked it out and I made new promises or requests of them. I won't be able to do this for two weeks. This is the day and the time I can complete this. Are you good with that? And they're like, yeah. They're like really good. It's because you see, it's a different conversation than, you know, than saying, um, you know, all my circumstances, um, this, you know, me being upset and me bringing my upset to them. So that's actually how, how I handled it with integrity. And it's funny, once I did that, then um, I had all sorts of partnership from, from all the people that, I ha that I'm in business with. Oh, Wendy, got it. Let me help you. Can I do this? Can I do that? I had another person step up and say, I do uh, professional coaching. Uh, you know, let me take some of those clients for you. Like, let me do that because you've done it for me often. Like that. That's the kind of thing that shows up when I get what's going on in here and, and, then, and then get really, uh, like I honor who I say I am versus be at the effect of what my circumstances in life are. Okay, so Jan or Marash, what are you guys getting in this conversation? Hey, Marash, you, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I, this, this uh, yeah, thank you. Um, the idea of, of uh, honoring your word, is, as you said, uh, how, how to work it out, I, it's it's very use, it's, it's very useful for me because uh, I know this feeling of being, um, let's say like being committed to a lot of things uh, or, or working on too many projects and and eventually you have to uh, yeah you have to say no to certain people or you have to say I I simply can't can't finish something um, uh -huh. and yeah I made I made the same. Uh, experience uh, as you said when you communicate um, your circumstance like uh, this and this happened to my family I cannot finish this project uh, people yeah start being very very helpful um, instead of just not doing something or not showing up and then and expect uh, everybody just to uh, to be okay with everybody it. to deal with my my problem yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so where in your life, where in your work for what you're up to as a leader, because I'm so clear you're a leader here too. Who are you about your, the, the, when things don't go well, like how, like look back at something like for just like, look, you can see what you can discover there inside of integrity. That's I didn't quite get your question. Okay, go to, a, go to a time that you've had lots coming at you and where there's unworkability, right? There's unworkability in your work, maybe in your personal life, I don't know. But there will be some unworkability. That's one of the, one of the places that you can see that integrity is lacking always is where, where things are unworkable, the foundation of integrity is lacking. So for you personally, what, what would be... What's the time and a place that there was unworkability? Oh, and you didn't, for me personally, it was, didn't know what to do with it. 
Uh, it was it was quite uh, recently actually. It was uh, like I, I had a I had a long relationship which like broke apart, and uh, my grandma died after long illness. Uh, a lot of uh, things uh, coming at school, of course, at work because I, I work next to next to or apart from studying. Uh, there was a big project, and it was it was just everything was just too too much on me, um, and there was like like it was the feeling of i have failed my my um it wasn't just about the commitments it was just about not, not being or feeling not not to to be good enough uh with uh mm-hmm. like because when, when you talk to other people it, it's often like you have the feeling that it's all manageable you 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 have to to manage it um and it was not possible which was very frustrating but in a, in, a, in a very unpleasant way um yes but i mean um, eventually i worked it out I, I explained the situation to some people and uh, the, the project could have been postponed for two or three weeks so it, it eventually worked out but yeah. opening was not it was a bit counterintuitive to, to be honest uh, but it worked out eventually it is isn't it and yet when you do, I love that you said that. It is, it is not what we want to do as humans. We don't want, we, we want to do everything we say we're going to do. But when we can't, it's not, it is not easy. When things are breaking apart, when there's unworkability, it is not an easy mountain to climb. And yet to climb it and keep climbing it and keep bringing integrity into your space is really what makes the difference. And it's what we, it's counterintuitive, exactly like you said, counterintuitive, yeah. Um, If you look at it inside of politics right now, Marash, what do you see as, um, where do you see the lack of integrity? Um, It's it's quite quite a, yeah, very, very, very recent topic. Um, I have a good friend who will be joining a, a private rescue ship in, in the Mediterranean um, in a couple of days. And you, you always like when, when I mention her um, and what she's up to, you always have this discussion of um, like, like where it's actually an option for people to say, yeah, it's okay if people die on the sea. Like if, if, if we, if we don't save people who are about to die. Um, and for me, it, it may, maybe it's not, not politics in general. It's not talking like, it's not talking about politician, but, but also, um, but it's mainly about like normal people um, who are able to say something like, if someone's dying, let them die. Even if you can save him just because let's face it, he's black or she's black. Um, yeah. And this, this is something enti- like really striking to me. Like y- y- we, we can talk about migration policy. Um, that's a different topic. But like w- when I see someone dying, I save him. That's the, the basic human instinct uh, for me at least. Yes. Um, yes. And I don't understand how people can communicate this so openly uh, and be proud of saying uh, such things. Yeah. 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 Um, and then how do you make the difference? How will you make the difference with the people that are saying such things? Who are you uh, about them? Sorry. There was a glitch. I'm sorry. How will you? Yeah, no problem. How do you like who you are as a leader? How do you make the difference for the ones you don't agree with? I, try to put it into perspective. I, I try to say, um, for example, I had this conversation with a very Christian people um, and, and I asked them, imagine like um, saying they need shelter um, and they are from a foreign country. Um, what would you do? Would you, would you let them stay or not? And when they say no, then I tell them, yeah, that's exactly what, what Joseph and, and uh, Maria did. And then suddenly you, you see the people realizing, okay, maybe like I, I try to put things into the perspective of, of the people. Um, 
after yeah. I get rid of the anger, <laughs> which sometimes come in the first place. See, the anger is the context, right? Like, I can't believe that you say that, yeah. right? Like to the others, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it, it's where there, it's, it's, it really, I think inside of, you know, politics, and, and I really do use the world for politics, right? There's policies, there's procedures, and then there's who we are about them, right? Um, and, and if you take fundamentally where you don't agree with someone, you know, you want to start looking, especially there, who am I that I can make a difference, a difference for these people, and a difference that will create a difference in the world, in the world of, you know, and where's there's the foundation of integrity. So I'll give you, um, when my, uh, most of the people that I really love, um, that I spend a lot of time with, because I'm a rancher, are, are, are rural people. They're farmers, they're ranchers. They, um, they really, really, really care about their, their livestock. They care about the earth. They care about who's in, in, in power because it really has a large effect on them. So when the last American election happened, most of the people that I love were big supporters of Trump. And, and it's not where I was feeling it. And that's like the truth. I was more like Bernie Sanders, right? And when I got over my initial, like, like thinking, like, how can you support a man? Because I know these people, they're family orientated. Mm -hmm. They love people. They, you know, they love the earth. Like how, my thinking is like, and so my context is, how could you support a man like that? And once I got that, I'm like, okay, I got to understand something. There's something I'm missing. And I went to them and many of them. And I said, tell me, tell me what it is. Because on the outside, you know, who he is, it doesn't match who you are for me. What is it about him? And they often would say, I don't like everything he does, but here's what the last, um, you know, Barack Obama, the last president, was leaving my, my business, what I love with sometimes six and seven generations of, of people who have, you know, worked the land, loved the land, been there. And they were, they were ready, like literally inside of the policies that were developed for the caring for everybody. It was caring for everybody, but they didn't feel cared for. And they literally never felt heard. They like, literally, truly never felt heard. So there is a polarization. And when I could understand what, they're, what they were coming from, then I can like let go of any of, my, any of my prejudices about what I think of people who support a man like that, right? I can actually start getting what it's going to take to create you know, the, the, the peace and the harmony and for everybody to get hurt and for there to be integrity in all of all of the, um, and I know it sounds like a big goal, but integrity in um, politics. And it's not going to be overnight, but it's going to start with me understanding where you're coming from, understanding where somebody who's supporting a person that I don't think very highly of. And, and in that, it doesn't, I, I can start to hear and see things that I wasn't willing to hear and see before. So it's owning my, owning my bias, owning my prejudice. Now, does that mean I think it's okay for, you know, children to die or people to die because they've got a different color of skin or they come from a place that they're fleeing? No, I don't. I like absolutely don't think that's okay. But it will become, I will have, I will be able to make a difference from getting like the foundation of integrity with me for the foundation of integrity to happen everywhere else. So I owned what I, I owned my, uh, my own bias. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Thank you very so, much. Um, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. It was, it was startling to me. Still is sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, Jan. What are you getting? Thank you, Marius.
Uh, Jan, you're still on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I have a bad internet connection right now. That's a pity. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just go. Oh, can yeah. you hear me? Perfect. Uh, what, yeah, what, we what, can hear what you. were you saying? Because I just had a, a break in the internet connection, so you could repeat. Yeah. What are you getting? What are you getting from all this conversation? What are you getting about integrity? Uh, well, it, I it, it's about something that you might you might not be getting anything, but but if you are, let us know what you are getting. Yeah, I, I can make a remark about what you said, what Mother said, what I could say if you want. Could uh, be about yeah. four remarks. I don't know. Um, I'll try to continue without the video and you can tell me what's, what's better. Uh, yeah. About what you say, Wendy, just about Trump supporters. Uh, so just, just sometimes I have the impression that uh, if there's this general idea that Trump won. I just remind that he got over three million votes less than his opponent. I just also want to remind that George W. Bush Jr did not get uh, majority votes. That's just, you know, because sometimes <laughs> it seems that yeah. people um, act as if they were elected by a majority vote, which is not true. That's just... So where's the integrity? No, That's but the question. results of what, whether um, it is... Well, what, well the, the results are that who's president. Well, the result is that they got less votes. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. Open, and, and was, I, that's the result. I'm not, I'm not arguing that. But, but the, yeah. where the system um, is. Yeah, but yeah. That, that's, you know, in, in France, we're very used to, we're very okay with making a revolution in the political system. So <laughs> that's the French way of seeing it. Um, about what uh, Mara, Mara said. Talking with people who are talking about migrants or not saving migrants, um, it's also related to people about migrants at the Mexican and US border. It seems to me that it's very important to, to talk about real situations, facts, and what, what we, the way we would behave. Um, for instance, once I was talking, once I met one guy at school, at high school, who was a true anti Semite. And then I immediately asked him, what about that girl? And she was a Jewish girl. And he said, oh, no, no, she's a nice friend. And uh, it was good to see the discrepancy between what they were saying and what they were doing. And um, I mean, in the Mediterranean Sea, I talked to uh, officials from Frontex, the EU border agency, and, and they are saving people, you know, they are not. This is what they're doing. They are taking them on, bo on board when they find them. So uh, uh, I think it's always good to look yeah. at, at the facts as they are. Uh, and then, yeah. then it's good to have a real example of somebody who refused to save or save and talk with that person. I think that's very useful. But I don't like very much the approach of, you know, the f famous Harvard professor Michael Sandel in his lesson on, on justice. It's very impressive. He says, what if you either kill a, you know, there's a train with people inside and you have to sacrifice a big fat man to save the people. And it's a very nice philosophy trick, but I'm not sure it ever occur occurred in reality. I'm not sure it's based on facts. I'm not sure. I think it's just thinking. So uh, I would like very much if you would uh, uh, connect these debates to, to real examples, real life facts, and I think it would be much, much richer. Mm. Uh, yeah. Wendy, can I add, uh, add one more remark to the integrity issue uh, from my experience? Please do, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I worked two years at the French Embassy in Poland before, and one of my main, main activity was to organize a contest for cities, Polish cities, local government, what was the most sustainable city? And it was, uh, it was great because I thought that I was going to write only theory and nice diplomatic words, but no, I, think I had to find jury members, top experts of sustainable development. It was by category, waste management, water management, energy management, whatever, green spaces in cities and so on. What was the next uh, green city of tomorrow? And, um, 
and I had a boss and I was doing everything but I thought he was not fully um, full of integrity because he was uh, finding money in private corporations and he let everybody think that the other was in the project uh, you know diplomats business companies everybody so that everybody would not say no not pull out of the project and in the end they would all give their money and their fundings to it uh, until the last minute they did not pay the funding they did not sign the contracts but in the last minute everybody was there there were several hundred people a conference uh, awards were given by uh, politicians everybody was happy mayors were coming Dozens, dozens of cities had applied to the contest. It was a great success, and it was uh, live on Facebook and, on, and in the press, and so on. And and they paid everything. And I always thought, if I have to do it, I would do it in a way that people sign the contracts first, that I don't have to kind of lie to say, oh no, I'm sure they're on board when they did not fully say they are on board. Everybody. And here, I think that the good thing about integrity is to start to be the leader yourself and see what you would do because after that he left and there was and also i left and there was another woman who take the whole project and she was in charge uh, she didn't knew anybody but she got to know everybody and she was very like very honest and she waited for all the contracts to be signed for everybody to approve for all the projects to run even further become even more famous and what happened everybody just just went away because they were not ready to sign the contract. They were not kind of forced yeah. to get into it. And so one business yeah. company said, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to support the project. The other said, oh, if they are not supporting it, I'm also pulling out. And so what is integrity? Because in the end, you know, one guy maybe sometimes lied a little bit, but the project worked. Everybody was happy. And in the opposite example, you know, she was very honest, but in the end, they pulled out, and in the end, even she found another job somewhere else, actually, and there's nobody leading the stuff. And um, so I think it's interesting is what if we take commitments that are not easy to do, yeah. and we try to well, I achieve them, and then how do we deal? It's not that easy, actually. It's not that easy. Yeah, it's, you're 100% you're right. It's... Well, it's, it's like when I referred at the beginning, Jan, to integrity is like gravity. When there is not integrity there, it, there it, 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 it's just will be unworkable. When we keep the lack of integrity for ourselves, for others, or for the world in play, it will not create the world we want. So what you're speaking to is there was an attempt to, there was lack of integrity, and then there was an attempt to bring integrity to it. But the foundation of the, um, the it was built on no integrity. Did, did anybody communicate and address really how it, it like how not integrous it was? Because that would have brought honor to it, right? Oh, we did this. Um, you know, this, we had, we pretended about this, we lied about that, you know, like, cause we're human beings. We all, every one of us here have lied and have pretended about things in our life. And then what we have is kept our mouth shut. When we see it, when we see it and we know that it's not workable, we shut our mouths about it. Most of all, don't we? Is that kind of the way we operate? I'm not talking about all the time. I'm not talking about morally. I'm talking about like literally when we see there's no integrity in something, we'll go away versus actually addressing the lack of integrity there. Like we won't put ourselves at risk. Do you agree or disagree with that, Jan? Well, I think there's a big difference. If it's somebody else doing his own project and I see a problem, I might not be the right person to come and say there's no lacking integrity in your project. Now, if I'm yeah, in the project, then it's my duty to... to, to but I, I see that it takes really courage to, to face your problems, to face the lack of yes. potential lack of integrity. It takes courage. And I would like to go to something else that you asked. What do we do when we have some personal problems? So I would not give you know yeah. uh, painful examples about the times you were looking for a job and 
totally wrong direction for several months and it's just everything smashing down yeah. but it was yeah. always for me a lack an illusion a lack of knowledge and the idea that somehow I knew what was right and I think a lack of humility of just accept the new accept the opportunity as it is even if it doesn't look great or looks great just take it it's um, yeah uh, I think it has a lot to do with humility. Yeah, it uh, beautifully said. What you want, exactly. There are times, and that's every single one of us, that we've done things, we've said things, we've been places where who we know ourselves to be lacks integrity. So I used a really light lack of integrity coming here, right? It was easy for me to, you know, to own that one is where it's not easy. Like you want to start looking in your own lives where it's not easy to own your own integrity. Like what will make things whole and complete? And that's where you actually want to start to, like digging in, discovering, okay, what is it about my lack of integrity that I continue to keep that lack of integrity here in my life? So what is it about, you know, and you don't need to answer this, but except to yourselves, but you, you want to look to discover the gold in where you're still tolerating a lack of integrity for yourself. And then you're, and then that lack of integrity, how, you know, what, how does that impact you? How does it impact others? And how does it impact the world? So sometimes it is, you know, sometimes it, if it is your project, speak up. But what about, like, what, who could you be as a leader if it's somebody else's project and speak? I mean, I'm not saying to do that. I'm saying to consider. You could say anything about integrity, not morality, but integrity anywhere. You could actually stand for in integrity with all first. So owning your where you're integrous, but really discovering where you're not and actually dealing with where you're not in integrous and bringing integrity to that will actually create the muscle mass, the power for you to ha actually be able to have integrity everywhere in your leadership in the world. So when I, I, I you know, I'll give you another example, Jan. I coach some people that are, they make way like they is as far as like they're leading very large organizations corporations they make a ton of money they actually have influence and impact in the world and um and so when i'm coaching them they're coming to me for coaching to actually like discover something and we always use integrity as a foundation and where there's a lack of integrity with them i don't i don't pretend about it i don't you know you agreed for this and then you didn't do that. You know, I don't sit there and pretend. I don't keep it in play in the world. I actually address it. I address it. And I address my own lack of integrity. Like really address it. And then what gets created is availability for anything that's possible. Like they're, they're not, kind, they have enough people who are being very nice about them, very deferring to them. What they come to what they come come to me for is like to actually have discovery, discover their own lack of integrity so that they can get themselves out of the way to get what's between them and the difference they want to make in the world realized. Do you get that? Yeah. <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> I get everything with our slight um, microphone, you know, troubles, but I, I think I get the deep, the deep okay. message. Okay. Uh, I, I would even okay, add good. that there is a, a surprising by effect, a positive uh, externality, <laughs> if I could say, about integrity. It turns out that people who are, I think, really inspiring and really could be considered as leaders, whether in their family, among their two friends, or a crowd of millions of people, it's when they talk the way they actually are, and they open their heart and in humility. I mean, when you think about the famous speeches of Martin Luther King and so on, he was not pretending, and uh, people were touched by it. Yes. Uh, same story for yes. love stories and so on. 
And um, yes. and here again, you, it's not something you can plan. It's, you cannot plan, I will be uh, in, full of integrity um, for that speech, you know, and that will work. It, it doesn't work like that, but it's something that is able to uh, mobilize people from, from the inner, inner movement, I think. So um, it could be used yes. as a power too, although in many situations, integrity seems to be a weakness, you know, you, you might not get that deal done. Uh, you might, uh, your organization might appear weak, you might lose time. Uh. Yeah, Jan, it, it, so that's so great. Um, but what I'm saying, you know, it's really great what you're pointing to. There is, there seems like there's a lack of integrity, right? There, there like sometimes there's a lack of integrity and it's like, who are you going to be? Who are you about the lack of integrity? So who are you to be authentic, to be honest, to say what there is to say, especially with your own integrity? Like especially, you know, it starts with you, right? It starts with how you, like what you say you are. Like I, I think of uh, Nelson Mandela, right? Nelson Mandela, you know, he said he was going to be, a, like he was going to lead his people. And he went to prison for it. And he was, you know, you read his book and he was actually, he was offered the opportunity to be free, like literally offered the opportunity to be free. If he would like stop talking about apartheid, stop leading his people, like really like just like save himself, right? Like if he was willing to save himself, then he could save his family and he wouldn't do it. And so he's in hard labor in prison, but in his thinking, so integrous for himself. One of the things he's, he said is, I am free. So it didn't matter what his circumstances were around him. Didn't matter if there was jail around him. Didn't matter if he's doing hard labor. He was a man who said, I will do, I will lead my people. Not as like some, you know, like leader, leader like that. Like he just, he made himself a leader. He wasn't born a leader. He made himself a leader through who he said he was. And then it didn't matter what the circumstances were around him. He was free. And then he actually got free physically and led an entire nation and changed the world. So who are you? And, who, and how does your integrity match who you say you are? What will make the difference in the world? which is where we started out. Who do you say you are? And then that, who you say you are, your integrity needs to match it. And it won't always, but then it's, it's about being authentic about when you're inauthentic about who you say you are. Yeah? Yeah. And, and it and takes I would, something. Even, I, it I, takes my, my experience yeah. was that uh, I was uh, like not happy I had a boss who was not as full of integrity as I wanted him to be. And it turns out it's very helpful to have people around you working on projects in the same team and they don't have their integrity. And this is the right test for you. This is, do you criticize them or do you behave the way you want to be? And I mean, nobody would know Nelson Mandela like that if he had not been with a totally corrupt system with everybody around him and he was the only one. Uh, we don't see it, for sure we don't, I don't see it, but I can also be thankful to the people around me who are not full of integrity, but uh, with whom I worked on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, you can, be, you can be inspired by that. You actually can, if you can put aside the, you know, put aside what there is to put aside, because it's going to be there anyway. You can become inspired by, by uh, not the lack of integrity, but where you can be integrity. And you can bring integrity into any space, regardless of the circumstances. And it'll start with you. And you want to really, again, I don't want you guys to lose this. Start to discover the gold in where you're not in integrity. Discover it. Like, own it. Be responsible for it. What did I say I was going to do? Where did I communicate? What's my thinking? Like, what, you know, am I like a 
a victim of the circumstances or the lack of integrity around me? Or do I have something to say about the lack of integrity around me? The lack of integrity within me. Do I have something to say about that? You do. Yeah. Okay. Good. Victoria, I'm coming back to you. Have you, have you had enough to... Th thanks, Dion. Yeah. Man, thanks for the work all through. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you. It was no, go ahead, Victoria. I yeah. was trying to even make some notes about, you know, kind of uh, uh, the ideas that you were taking and uh, to discover ourselves that we are not perfect too, or as you were saying, not golden yeah. too. That's uh, in terms of integrity. <laughs> to tell the truth, at some point I was just... Uh, you know, kind of uh, coming from the academic background, we have one projection of how do we understand integrity. You're going to be laughing now. I'm, I'm very good in English, but I was just uh, Googling how to translate integrity in other meanings of it in order to understand more oh. the concept. And uh, in this respect... Awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, try, uh, I'm starting from a scratch, as we say, yes, so start from the very beginning. So oh, I'm try I was trying yeah. to, uh, to see the integrity is also having a new space for me and a new shape, thanks to your uh, reflections. It's about uh, what we call uh, uh, to advocating for your values. So what I understand now from your words. So advocating means not only fighting externally, but also um, uh, it's trying to, uh, to take the lead what is valuable for you. And when you're taking the lead in that, that what will keep you the power. And that what will try to not only motivate, maybe it's not the best word for that but this is what will equip you more in in any of uh in any of the sectors of life personal professional whatever so this taking the lead and uh, and as i understood you correctly correct me wendy if i'm wrong even from a chaos we can try to take the lead from something very small but it can be very sustainable for us to go through it Yes, 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 exactly. Right? <laughs> no, that's, what that's really great. Even from chaos, chaos, chaos yes? Yeah, yeah, it's from chaos. Uh, what, uh, as I told you, when you know what you're standing for, to take it very simple, uh, maybe not in the wording, uh, but you feel that you are knowing what you're standing for, it will it will definitely take you from a chaotic situation. So you will overcome it. Chaos, chaos. Okay. Uh, not the animal cow. Cause. Yeah. Spell it, Victoria. A chaos is something from chaotic, right? So uh, un unknown, right? So C H uh, A O S. Chaos. Chaos. You see, we even have a different yeah. pronunciation. Yeah. So <laughs> sometimes a yeah. good wording yeah. is the best yeah. strategy for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. That's, sometimes that's what we have to do. That's awesome. Yeah, 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 exactly. We have a different, uh, well, it, it, like, trust me, even um, uh, being in Texas here, there's so often I have to say, what are you saying? <laughs> if they have to say the same to me. So, yeah. And it's the same language. Yeah, got it. So thank you. For okay. That. Um, so yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for, and thank you for, for like, like really discovering something, you know, cause there is it, it. So there really is something to discover in integrity. It's not like it to actually come to it as a discovery, discovering for yourself. Where is my integrity? Who do I say I am? Where, where is that unworkable? Like who I say I am and where's their unworkability? And what can I discover in that? You know, discover about integrity, discover for myself. And it'll, it'll you know, there'll, there'll be some things that come up that you really want to like, really want to start like looking at and dealing with um, authentically. Yeah. 
Um, inside of this group, right? So one of the places that we can start is start with this group and start practicing together. Um, so coming to this, you know, to this academy, you know, really you want to start like really each other, who you say you are for a stand for one another, who you say you are when when things aren't going to work you know like who are you going to be about when things don't work and you don't um you know like you, you can't come to one of these calls you know what are you going to do about it so i think that integrity too like there's some real practical things we can do with it and it's like what a, you know what what am i agreeing to and you want to really agree to it like agree to it like not like you have to do it, but something that you're causing, like you're agreeing to, you know, I'll show up like that. Um, and when I don't, I'll communicate it, you know, each other, and then own the integrity of what you guys are getting here together and who you're going to be together and individually and what you're going to cause out in the world. You know, what difference are you going to make out into the world inside of integrity here? Because this is a this is like a little test tube here, you know. It's a it's a test so tube, and things you, will come up. It's then. a strategy from you to make us come on time to every next video for the rest of our life. If right, <laughs> well, you so here's here's <laughs> that's good, John. Yeah, here's what you want to get. You don't have to say yes to come to everything. That's the, that would bring into, if you don't agree with it, then say you don't agree with it. Like say, I'll come to this one and I'll come to that one and I will not come to this one, right? That would bring full integrity, no judgment, no anything into the space, you know? And then when life happens and you can't be who you said you would be, you communicate it. And if you take it here and you apply it everywhere in your life, you will, you'll, dis, you'll, 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 you'll start seeing things shift and things move that you have no idea we're going to shift and move. So I'm just saying, practically speaking, use it here. Use it where you're safe to use it. So you're not always safe to point out to the guy next to you who doesn't have integrity in the project. You know, you might not be at the, at the point where you're going to point out the lack of integrity that there is there. Yeah. <laughs> Yawn. Yeah. So, yeah. So, what do you, what do you guys, uh, you know, oh, you know, the other thing I wanted to say too, you want to make in the world your yes, like integrity, so your context, your yes be as powerful as your no. So, and that's kind of what I was saying, Yon, is that. You want to be able to have the freedom, the power to say no as much as you say yes. So where there's a no, it's just as powerful as your yes. So no, I don't agree to these terms. Here's what I agree to, like that. But we have a way of being in the world together that we're very nice with each other. We're not, you know, truthful all the time. We're very straight with each other. I agree to this. I do not agree to that. And then be who you say you are. Andrea, what time? Do we have 20 more minutes or have I gone over time? No, we have a few minutes, but I think it most depends once we are, once we want to discuss something or not. We have a few minutes until 45. Yeah. But I think it depends on this group because okay, it's getting really like, I think a massive on content already on insights and and there's a lot of content here i know i know content, we brought a lot to it really okay yeah i know i think it's up to yeah. us you know what we agree on yeah oh i love that you put let your yes be as powerful as yeah, you know well. yeah mm -hmm. yeah sorry for the grammar mistakes okay. <laughs> i i'm like like seriously, truly such a bad speller, I wouldn't even notice it. So don't worry about that on my end. Um, so anyway, what do you like? Let's, let's just, uh, let's wrap this up about what you're getting. Um, 
what you what you can see you can take on um and and even be authentic about if you're not if, if, if this is none of this is new to you that's totally fine like i like seriously honor you being here so what are you getting let's let's go around who wants to start um i can start uh for me you know like I cannot say it's uh, something new, but at the same time, I can say everything is new here. So I think it's the paradox of our memory, our mindset, and, you know, our reflections. It's really a paradox. Um, and it's a box of paradox, to tell the truth. So my first uh, takeaway is um, um, the way to keep a world uh and the way to keep our own world that's the integrity number one mm -hmm. for me uh the second way is uh, uh how to make it how to make unworkable workable so it's when uh, there is a gap mm -hmm. or a lack of integrity uh that's uh, it's not the weak point actually it's a strong point but still it needs to be worked out uh, and that's the golden mm -hmm. rule for me, as uh, you and said that. Uh, so, so we we don't have to say we are perfect. It's my third takeaway. But uh, accepting our imperfectness is uh, keeping us even more. Uh, and the last one is just as you say, you want to make your yes as strong as your no. I think it's uh, a crucial point because if you are feeling it's uh, something you want to say, it doesn't mean it should be yes or no. It means it's the way you are reflecting that. So thank you for this take. So yes. Please. See, you really wrapped it up beautifully. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and you're very welcome. All right, who else would like to go? Mario? Mario, Marosh. Sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I would, I would uh, agree with uh, Victoria in this. Uh, it, the, the very practical um, examples you gave us, it, it, it's like, it's, uh, there are good takeaways for, for just the everyday life. Uh, for me, in particular, um, the last message, uh, your yes, that your yes should be as powerful as your no, it has um, kind of wrapped up the, I don't know, like a lot of experience I have, I have gathered for the last, uh, let's say, half a year or a year, it, it was like a nice, nice wrap up of, of, uh, of all of it, like bringing it uh, to a point. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Mm. You're very welcome. I'm, I'm really, I'm really glad that, um, that you're, you're going to be able to like really use that to have power of both places. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Jan. Yeah, so I would take this this quote uh, that you're yes, yes, as helpful as you know, because I feel there's something in this idea that could uh, feed uh, feed me in, in the future actions. Uh, but when it comes to analyzing what uh, I think or summarizing the, the talk, for me there are two things that you Wendy underlined that I did not connect with the integrity. Uh, maybe necessarily, but I think they are essential to you. One is to be reliable, reliability, uh, especially in Germany, it's absolutely essential. So I don't know if you've ever talked to German. <laughs> they want you to be absolutely reliable between what you do and what you say. And it seems to me that this is very close to what you, Wendy, would call integrity. But the other thing that you say is also communicating, communicating your needs, communicating what you are, being open, so it's more than just saying uh, this and this being reliable. It's also being able to adjust by being authentic in your communication. This is how I would yes. sum up the ideas. And to me personally, from my experience, I keep a third element, which is, as I said, which was nice working with people who are not 100% on integrity, but want to look like that, but we disagree. To me, that was finding my gray zone and being okay with it. That is, where's this area where you are still on board and you fully support everybody, but you know you would not act the way they acted. You would surely not do that. But you, I mean, you, you're not going to, you know, 
uh, denounce them to the police or, <laughs> or start a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's okay yeah. to know our our tolerance area, and uh, this is not all right for me. But it's all right for me to be in a project because the project is important, and I committed to it. And I think it's okay to be yeah. just for us. We all have a different gray zone, different needs, different values, and I think it's. It's uh, yeah, it might be a bit tough, but it's I think it's it's good, and then we feel comfortable with it, and we know what our so-called tolerance. And <laughs> well, I, I want to offer you something. You know, well, you're welcome, and thank you for thank you for giving me that for feedback. I want to offer you something for, um, for who you like, I who I what I can hear, and it's inside the context, the gray zone, right? So when I um. When I speak to people that, it, that inside of my life, inside of my business, and there is unworkability, one of the things I do is I, I will, when I say what's unworkable and I own my part in the unworkability, then what I do is I, I do a declaration and, it's, and it would be something like this. That, and, and I'm going to give you this declaration, all of you here, is who, how, how I'm going to relate to you and speak to you authentically is only as a leader. And sometimes that's going to be uncomfortable. But my promise is I will only relate to you and speak to you as a leader. And from that, from when I declare things like that, then the gray zone is, you know, it's just gray, but, but it, it's, there's a way I can be with or I can speak to authentic leadership inside of that. And, and when I, and I don't just say, Hey, I'm, I'm going to do this to you. I say, this is how I'm going to speak to you. Does that work for you? Like, like, are you in agreement that I only speak to you as a leader? And it, it's some people will say, I'm a little afraid for you to speak to me as a leader, but that's who I want you to speak to me as, because that's actually who I am. So, so it, it's a, it's a way to, to actually bring integrity you're speaking into the gray zone. You declare who you are. You actually speak to people for who they are really versus the gray zone. Do you get that? Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I, I guess you, when the, your example comes from projects on which you were an initiator or a leader or maybe business projects, yes? Sometimes, sometimes I'm the leader, sometimes I'm not. It, but who I say I am, actually, I gets declared. You know, law, often I'm the leader, but I'm not always. Like, yeah, like yeah. In the work Andrea and I have together have not been the leader of, of, yeah, a, of, you know, of yeah. lots of it. And I've been in breakdown. Yeah, and I've been in breakdown. And, where I, and so I just say, okay, look at who I say I am is love. Who I say I am is transformation for leaders. So I'm going to get over myself right now and I'm going to speak to you as a leader. I, will, I request you speak to me that way too. Okay? So it doesn't have to have a title. It's just who you say you are. Um, so I'm going to be coming back into this conversation with you guys and the next one will be on authenticity and authentic leadership. So we're going to just keep building on these blocks. And so, um, so my declaration is I will only speak with you as the leaders, the transformational leaders you are. Are you in agreement with that? <laughs> For sure. Go, yes. Yeah, no, on the like, same boat. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yes, yes. Yeah. Right let, 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 let's try and, and do the whole journey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could. For sure. Yeah. Anyway, it, it, it has literally been an honor and a privilege to be with you. Thank literally. You. So thank you. You fulfill on this kind of conversations fulfills on what I'm up to in the world. And I, man, do I appreciate the kind of human beings it takes to come into these conversations. Thank you all. Thank Thanks, you. Wendy. Thanks a lot. Thanks Wendy. a lot, Wendy. And see you. See you all. You're welcome. Catherine, that you will need a lot for the voice from this session. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. And the session is recorded. So. Okay. Have a lovely evening for those who yeah, have right. lovely evening. Have a lovely afternoon, Wendy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I shall. Thank okay, you. bye guys. Bye. <laughs> bye.